Hi guys, it's Lisa. Today I'm going to share with you guys my birth story. Well, I gave birth in December of 2019 and I was 40 weeks and two days. It was 3 a.m. I woke up to go to the bathroom and I kind of felt like some light cramping and I woke my husband up and I said, I feel some cramping, like I think I might be in labor. But very quickly, those light period cramp pains turned into very painful contractions. And it's crazy because I feel like a lot of women have like those light period cramps maybe for a few hours before it turns into real contractions. But for me, it was like so quick. And I don't know if it was because I was sleeping before, so maybe I didn't feel it. But yeah, so at 4 a.m. is when I started to really feel a lot of pain during the contractions. And I downloaded an app on my phone at that moment to um, time the contractions as they were happening. I remember every time they would happen, I would just like get on all fours or just like put myself into the fetal position and just like grab my husband. Like every time I had a contraction, I would always call out, Justin, come here, just so I could hold on to him because it was so painful. And like the crazy thing about contractions is in between contractions, you're not in any pain at all. Like you can just go on and live life. It's like you didn't have a contraction like a minute ago. It's just during those contractions, it's like so, so painful. Like I think I would rate it a good nine out of 10 for pain. And the only reason I don't rate it a 10 out of 10 for pain is because I ended up getting an epidural and to me, a 10 out of 10 pain would have been if I went through the whole labor process without getting an epidural. So yeah, like I said, I woke up at 3 a.m. and then I couldn't go back to sleep because of the contractions. So me and my husband were just preparing to go. Um, I was just kind of like packing. Um, we had our hospital bag ready, but I think I was just like packing some last minute things. And then during that time as well, I told my husband like, cook some things because I want to bring some food to the hospital. So he was cooking and then in the middle of him like cooking vegetables and everything, I would just call out to him if I was having a contraction so he could just come and hold me. And it was funny because like he was cooking, he'd be like, but I'm cooking. And I was like, I don't care. Then around like 6 a.m. I called my OB and I told him, you know, my contractions are happening like every four to five minutes and they're lasting like a minute long. And he said, you know, you should go to the hospital now. So um, by the time we got out of the door, it was 7 a.m. So then we got to the hospital, a resident came and examined me. And at that point I was, I believe like two to two and a half centimeters dilated but my contractions were very regular and typically they admit you when you're four centimeters dilated but i think since i was like halfway there i think they just felt like by the time i went back home and came back i would probably already be four centimeters dilated so they admitted me so from the time that we got to the hospital to the time that we actually went into our labor and delivery room it took like maybe like an hour or two hours and then once we got settled in you know the nurse asked me like do you want an epidural and i was like yes definitely and i had thought about you know trying to do it without the epidural before i gave birth and then once it got to it and i had the option i was like yeah no i i'm definitely gonna get it because i was in so much pain so then by the time I got my epidural in, and luckily it only took one shot, but like I, for some reason I still have the scar on my back and I don't know if that's like normal, but it's been, yeah, six months and I still have like a scar there. It's almost like a purple looking bruise. By the time I got that, it was 10 a.m. So by that time I had already been in labor for seven hours. So the doctor told me if I got an epidural that likely it would affect the contractions that they wouldn't be as regular anymore that's what happened with me um, my contractions started spacing out from like every four to five minutes to every seven to eight minutes so at that point we started pitocin which will um, keep your contractions more regular and um, just help the labor process along so i got the pitocin probably around you know 11 a.m. or 12 p.m. and 
We did have to up titrate it maybe like twice to get my contractions to become more regular again. But basically from the time that I got the epidural to the time that I had to push, I just slept the entire way through because I hadn't slept since 3 a.m. And also when I was admitted to the hospital, you're actually not allowed to eat anything except for like clear liquids, so like soup or jello. And I was in too much pain at home to even think about eating. But surprisingly, I was like, okay. Um, I mean, I only woke up like the few times that my OB came in to assess me. But it was crazy because when he saw me in the morning at like, you know, 8 a.m., he was like saying, oh yeah, you'll probably push by five or six. And I was like, how can he know that? But then, I mean, I slept all the way until he came back around 4 p.m. and he said, yeah, you're nine centimeters, so we'll, we're gonna start pushing soon. So I just like relaxed until then. At 5 p.m., I was 10 centimeters dilated, so it was time to push. I started pushing around five or 5.30, I wasn't exactly sure, but my biggest fear in giving birth was tearing. I really, really wanted to avoid tearing. So I thought to myself, oh, I won't push that hard because if I push him out slowly, I'm less likely to tear. So I would say for like that first good 45 minutes of pushing, I was probably giving it like 50% of my effort. And the whole time my husband was like, you're doing great, Lisa. Like, you're awesome, like you're doing so good. I think after, yeah, like uh, 45 or minutes of pushing, we decided to take a break. And I guess I hadn't made that much progress in terms of pushing because I, yeah, I guess I hadn't really been trying that hard because I really didn't want to tear. And I also really, bless you. And I also really didn't want to poop because I know some women poop when they give birth, but that was something I really wanted to avoid even though I know it's so, so normal. So after that 45 minutes of pushing and not getting, not getting very far, is what I'm saying very interesting? I'm talking about when I gave birth to you. So after that 45 minutes to an hour of pushing, my doctor came back in and he said, you know, okay, we're gonna take like a 15 to 30 minute break, but if you don't get this baby out by seven because I had started pushing at five, then we might have to use forceps to get the baby out and vacuum the baby out, or we might have to do a C-section. And I was like, what? I didn't know that we would have to do that. So he said, typically, he would give his patients two hours to push. Any longer than that would put the baby at risk. So once the doctor left, I told my husband like, oh, like babe, like I haven't really been trying that hard, but I didn't know I would have to maybe get the forceps and the vacuum used. Like, I don't want that. I, I'm really gonna try this time. And when I told my husband that, he was so like flabbergasted and kind of mad because he was like, are you serious? He's like, I feel like such a fool. I was like encouraging you the whole time. I was telling you like, you're awesome. And you made it look like you were like pushing really hard. I was like, yeah, I know. But like, I just really didn't want to tear and I really didn't want to poop. And I told him like, yeah, I think the nurse knew I wasn't giving that much effort, which is why she was like saying, try to bear down. But I think when she was telling me to bear down, she was basically trying to tell me to push a little bit harder. But basically once the doctor came in with that scary news, I decided to put in all my effort for the next time that we would push. We took a, yeah, so we took a 15 to 30 minute break and during that break time, Caleb actually descended a lot. The first session of pushing, it was just me, my husband and the nurse. And I was really surprised because I thought the doctor would be there for the whole thing, but he didn't come in until the second session of pushing, which was like 6.15. At that point, that's like when he got all like the, mm -hmm. thank you for sitting here with me. Um, that's when he kind of like got all the equipment out um, just to get ready for, you know, Caleb. So then we started pushing. I believe it was like 6.15 when we started pushing. So this time when they told me to push, I really, really pushed and I, I, kind of like threw away the care of tearing, I threw away the care of 
of pooping. I mean, I was still scared of tearing, but I was just like, okay, if I poop, I poop. And in 20 minutes at 6.35, um, this little guy came out. Once he was finally like out, out, I just like broke down crying. And I think part of it was obviously because I was happy that I could meet him, but actually I think probably like 60 to 70% of the reason why I broke down was because I was like, oh my gosh, this is finally over. Because that last, you know, 20 minutes was super intense in terms of the pushing, the pain, the pressure. That last 20 minutes of pushing was just me bearing down really hard and yeah, it was crazy. It was really painful still, even with the epidural, so I can't even imagine what it would have been like without it. Um, my doctor ended up actually giving me an episiotomy, so I had a second degree tear anyway, so yeah, I guess my thought of pushing slowly didn't exactly work out. But yeah, it's funny because my doctor always said like, oh, like women who are pretty athletic or women who work out regularly have a really easy time giving birth so you'll probably only have to push for like 30 minutes that's what he said in the beginning because I had been lifting weights my entire pregnancy and I guess if I had really just tried from the beginning I would have probably yeah only had to push for 30 minutes or so because by the time I really started to push, it only took me 20 minutes to get him out. In total, I was in labor for 16 to 17 hours. And as births go, I would say I had it like not bad. Like I had a pretty smooth um, birthing experience. Nothing really unexpected happened. Obviously, like it was painful. Obviously, it was hard. Those things I feel like are unavoidable, but all those things considered, I would say I had like a good experience. I really want to encourage any pregnant woman out there to work out throughout your pregnancy. I think it will definitely help in the birthing process. You can do a lot when you're pregnant. Basically, I was doing all the exercises that I had been doing beforehand, just not using as heavy weights. But yeah, so that is our story. And if you guys have any similar experiences, feel free to share them down below. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos from us, please hit the subscribe button. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Do 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 do